Hello and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to tell you how I was able to rake in over $20,000 every month and exactly step by step how you can do the same too. So stay tuned. My name is Rachel Wells and if you haven't been to my channel before, you are really and truly missing out. You need to hit subscribe, like this video, share this video, comment, you haven't seen my previous videos, you haven't seen my story of where I talk about how I was able to go from being laid off to now making over $60,000 in just a little over three months then you need to go back to that video and watch that because today I'm kind of building off of that and I'm talking about how to bring in, how to rake in a six-figure income uh, with my side hustles currently bringing in over $25,000 a month. And I'm going to walk you through exactly step-by-step -step how I did it in the hopes that you can do it as well too. Okay, so let's get right into it. All right, so number one, last year, as you already know based on my last video, I was laid off from my job. I was working as a project manager. And the first thing I started doing um, when I was laid off and I decided to go into launching my side hustle eventually into a full-time hustle as a freelancer was number one, I built a website. That's first and foremost. You've absolutely got to build a website. There's no dancing around it. People may say, you know, well, I've got my social media page and I think that's a lazy cop-out. You've got to build a website because a website is your tangible Google proof. It's your SEO. And for those of you who are not familiar with what SEO is, SEO means search engine optimization. In other words, in order for you to rank highly on Google pages, you need to have an SEO strategy. And one of the best ways to do that is by having a website. It's very difficult to establish solid search engine optimization without your own website. Now you might be thinking, well, why do I need to know about that? Why is, why is that important? The reason that's important is because Think about it, when you're typing, when you're on Google and you're typing for a service, well, first of all, when you're looking for a service, where do you go? You go to Google. And when you type that service in, what do you typically tend to click on? Do you click on the option that's on page number 10? Or do you, scroll, you keep scrolling endlessly looking for the best solution? No, even though there are probably hundreds of Google search results, you're only gonna look at the first page of search results and you're probably only likely to look at the very first few that are on the list, the top five links perhaps that Google recommends. So this is why it's so important that you have a website because with a website you can establish not just a professional brand, a professional personal brand for yourself, but also you get to establish your search engine optimization so that if people are searching for your service as a freelancer, for example, if you're a video editor, um, you could, of course, market yourself on freelance websites like Upwork or Fiverr or other places. But if you have a website, it's more, it's seen as more professional, it's more official. Okay, you've got your own site, your own personal brand, your own page. But not only that, you get a bit of that valuable real estate on Google. And if you optimize your website correctly, when people type in certain queries, your website will show up and you'll probably be in eventually, as you keep building up your strategy, you'll get to be number one on Google. So that's whatever people type in related to video editing services in the local area, your name shows up, your website shows up, and that results in more traffic to your website, to your services, ultimately more money, right? That's what we're all about, right? So that's number one thing. Number one thing I did yeah, in order to get me to where I am right now is I built a website from scratch. Didn't have the money to pay a developer, didn't have the money for a nice fancy website. I literally went to Wix. Wix.com is a great place um, to you know, get your website together if you don't have website design skills, drag and drop features, use the Wix editor and I customized it to how I wanted it. Um, the initial, I must say, my website underwent several revisions. The initial website that I launched, I released, it looked an absolute hot mess. I mean, it was neat, it looked okay, but it was boring, it was bland. Um, it didn't look attractive at all. And so I was able to, after consulting with my marketing director, my mother, 
um, because she's a marketing professional, I was able to kind of get some ideas on ways that I could change it, different pages I needed optimizing for, you know, the, just the aesthetic purposes. So I changed those things around and um, kept updating the pages and new pages um, and eventually got it to how the website looks today. Um, I'm by no means a web developer or an expert, but for me to do all that on my own, I think I did a pretty good job, wouldn't you say? Okay, so number one, create your own website, okay? You don't need to hire a developer, just make sure you make, make it crisp, clean and professional. And if you have essential details like your contact information, your services and about you section, you know, some sort of welcome page um, policies, you know, there's a lot of things that we forget about as freelancers, we're all about getting the money, we forget about the legal side of things, such as terms and conditions such as cookie policy because it's a website um maybe tracking data so privacy policy website privacy policy um any policies relating to purchases and um, cancellations refunds all of that needs to be included on your website because trust me take it from me it will save you a lot of heartache in the long run okay so that's enough about that website the next thing you need to establish is your linkedin presence now, when I say presence, I don't mean you've got a profile on LinkedIn. That's not enough. That's not going to count. That's not going to cut it. I mean, you actually need to have a LinkedIn presence. So as opposed to just being on there and having a profile, build a presence, build, basically build a personal brand. What I mean by that is your profile, number one, it needs to be complete. So every section of your profile, as much as possible, needs to be filled, filled, in, filled in, sorry, and thankfully, LinkedIn has added so many updates since I joined LinkedIn. I think well, I joined it originally in 2017. But even last year when I was going full time into business, LinkedIn has made so many updates since then. It's unbelievable. It's very, very attractive option for freelancers. They have a services section which you can fill in. You can showcase your reviews now. See, when I was doing this last year, the services section was a separate section which you had to click into to see it. Now they allow you to display your services section actually on your profile and you can see customer reviews on your profile. So it's really amazing what LinkedIn is doing with that. So, you know, fill in your headline, um, your about section, your work experience. Yes, you're freelancing, but your work experience counts because it all, it's all about transferable skills. Um, fill in all sections of your LinkedIn profile as much as possible. And if you've already done some freelance work or actually sold that product or service before, Call some, contact some of your old clients and get them to leave testimonials or recommendations on your profile. It all helps to boost it. Now, there's a whole ton of things I could say about creating and optimizing your LinkedIn profile as a freelancer or when you're starting out in business and building up your personal brand, but I do not have time to say that in this video. So I will be sharing that in another video shortly, so stay tuned for that. But I just want to touch on that because that's really important. Because LinkedIn is where you get to establish did I say personal brand? Yes, your personal brand. It's where you get to establish your thought leadership. And that's where I established my thought leadership. Mind you, I was laid off in March of last year and I began establishing my thought leadership like immediately. Even though I was looking for a job at the same time, I was still establishing my thought leadership. And thought leadership doesn't mean you need to be an expert. It doesn't mean you need to have a master's degree. It doesn't mean you need to be a white man in a suit, an old white man in a suit and, and work your way up all the way to CEO level. When people think about thought leaders, we always think about Tony Robbins, we think of Bill Gates, we think of all these older white men in, in, who are senior executives. You do not need to be uh, an older white male to be a thought leader. That's the wrong picture. You can be a young black professional woman like myself and still be a thought leader. You don't need to have years and years and years of experience behind you to be a thought leader. I'm living proof of that. Um, I only had three years of experience in management and I took the skills that I had, I took what I knew and I made it work for me. I didn't sit there and wait and say I'm too young. And believe me, I had, and this is a subject for another video, but I had tons of people telling me I'm too young. Rachel, you can't be a leadership expert. You know, Rachel, what does she know? And people, even on LinkedIn, would mock me because of my age. And it got to the point where, you know, I'm 24 now, and back then I was 23. But even when I started initially writing for Forbes, I would have people in the comments and people sending me messages saying basically that I don't know what I'm talking about, mocking me because of my age, and I'm too young and inexperienced. But eventually, I was able, thank God, to put them all to silence. Eventually, they stopped. I don't get those messages anymore because people see me for who I am and they realize, wow, Rachel really knows her stuff. So you don't need to wait to have everything together to be a thought leader. With all the expertise you already have, if you've got skills, if you've got expertise and knowledge that you've gained from your experience at work, put that to work for yourself. 
and become a thought leader in that area. I obviously, you upskill yourself, you hone in on your knowledge, but make sure you make those skills, make your knowledge work for you. Don't wait for the perfect opportunity. Don't wait until you're old before you start establishing thought leadership. And so that's what I did. I established my thought leadership on LinkedIn. I was constantly posting thanks to my marketing director, Safia Abene, who's actually my mom. Um, she was always working with me when it comes to scheduling posts and optimizing like the, the graphics, the, like the graphic design, the format for it, because I could not have done that on my own. That would have been too much. Um, but I was writing a lot of the content um, and then I was engaging with people on LinkedIn as well. I had a completed profile. I kept updating it. It's always good to keep updating your profile, you know, from time to time as you expand your thought leadership and everything. And then now, um, or not only now, but recently LinkedIn introduced something called the LinkedIn Top Voice Program for the gold badge, the gold community badge. So this is really important. I'm not going to go into detail now. Stay tuned for, the, for another video where I'm going to be talking about that shortly. But with the gold badge, you can literally establish thought leadership and work your way up to becoming a LinkedIn top voice uh, with the gold community badge if you answer questions to AI generated articles. So LinkedIn regularly releases AI generated articles on a particular topic or skill and it gets people to contribute their thoughts and ideas. And if you contribute enough, you can work your way up to earning that gold community badge. Not the blue badge, that's a step up, but you can at least get the gold badge. And that will go on your profile and people will recognize you for being a thought leader with that particular area and that particular skill. So LinkedIn is doing a lot to make people um, visible as freelancers or as, as thought leaders and to help you build your personal brand. So that's a must. Number one, going back, create your website. Number two, you've got to build a LinkedIn presence. And there's so much to that that I can't cover in this video. As you can already see, I'm getting ahead of myself, but definitely make sure you build your LinkedIn presence. That's vital. Um, you don't even need to worry about getting clients from LinkedIn at this point, even though you will. But um, the main focus is to build your presence, okay? Build your presence. And then at the same time you're building your presence, number three is to research what people need. And this is a mistake I made when I started out. I was so focused on what I thought people needed that I didn't concentrate on actually meeting the needs of the people. So initially, you know, my, my career path has, and my business has evolved over the years. I started out as a career coach and I thought people needed career coaching. And so I was pushing, pushing, pushing career coaching and wondering why no one was actually responding. Then I realized last year, people actually needed resume writing. This was before AI kicked off um, in ChatGPT and everything. So I started doing resume writing and realized that resonated with people more. And I did all sorts of things, the job search bundles, I did, I did all sorts of things and I kind of, I had to remain agile so I could go with what people needed. And eventually that dried up and I realized, okay, people don't need that anymore. What do they really want? Then when I started write, writing as a freelance writer for Forbes, I realized, oh, people desire more information about leadership and leadership development as in, from a career standpoint. So I started writing about that. And even as a freelance writer, up to this day, I'm constantly researching and having to be agile to what people want, to what people need. And you've always got to do that as a business owner, as a freelancer, whether you're running a side hustle or whether it's a full-time business, you've got to constantly research what the people need. Because if you don't do that, you're wasting your time. A lot of times people go into business assuming what people need. They have the idea first, they have the idea for the product or service they want to deliver, and they go right after it and deliver it. Not thinking about, not doing adequate research to think about, is this in demand? Is this trending right now? Do people actually need this right now? Maybe people need it, but do they recognize they need it right now? Are they actually asking for it? Um, because they may need it and not be asking for it, and then you're not going to make any money. So you've got to do that. I remember one entrepreneur, he was actually a CEO of a startup, he once told me, gave me some advice that I would never forget. He said to me, a lot of entrepreneurs go into business thinking about the solution first. He said, that's the wrong way around. Think about the problem first, then think about the solution. So we go into business thinking about, I want to sell this solution. And if I can make these sales, then I'm going to make money. No, that's the wrong way to think about things. You need to think about the problem first, whatever the problem is that needs to be solved. And when you think about the problem first, like, for example, people need X, Y, Z. Okay, well, if they need this, then there's multiple solutions. It may not just be that one solution. There's multiple ways to solve that problem. 
based on that demographic and then that way you can come up with multiple business ideas that's the best way to approach it and that's the most genuine way to approach it because at the end of the day we're not in business for ourselves alone even though we are in it to make money we're in business to help others and so you've got to think about the problem first before you start thinking about the solution that you're going to put together so you need to do your research as to what people need and this has to be not a one-time thing but a regular thing that you do you've got to constantly adapt and be agile and flex with the demands of people uh, who will be your customers so just recapping so far number one we looked at creating a website number two build your LinkedIn presence. Number three, research what the people need. Number four, over deliver. What do I mean by over deliver? Over deliver, I mean basically you've got to, when you're starting out in business, you've got to give more than what you're paid for. Now that sounds like, it sounds a little bit silly initially. It sounds ironic because like, wait a minute, I already, you've probably been laid off from your job. You're like, I already don't have enough money as it is. I'm already broke. How am I going to deliver more than what I've been paid for? Isn't that counterintuitive? Won't that backfire? Am I not going to miss out and lose money in the end? No, you won't. Initially, it may seem that way, but bear with me, hang in there. If you over deliver, so a client, you get your first client, woohoo, hey, and they pay you for your service. Let's say you're doing consulting, whatever it is. They pay you to do some consulting, okay? Let's say it's digital marketing consulting and you're a freelance digital market digital marketing consultant and they're paying you for consulting time, consulting on a project. Whatever the deliverables are for that project, definitely make sure you deliver on those deliverables, but then throw in a little bit of, of ice dust, not ice dust, fairy dust, whatever you call it. Throw a little bit of icing on top, that's what I meant to say. Give over and above beyond what they pay you because what that will do is number one, you're creating customer loyalty where they will feel obliged to you. They'll feel so grateful. They'll actually be surprised because they didn't pay you for it. So be surprised that you gave them more than what they actually asked for. This automatically leads to repeat business. They'll want to work with you again. Whenever they need someone, they'll definitely go back to you because you built such a good rapport with them. This also leads to referrals because they've had such a great experience with you. They'll definitely refer their friends and coworkers and whoever they know to you. So this works for the best of your business. Now, when I say give more, there's different ways to give more. It could mean throwing in a freebie. It could mean um, literally giving whatever extra, or it could be that you just deliver it in a shorter space of time. So you could give them a deadline and say, I'll get it done by next week. But actually you pace yourself to deliver it within five days. Um, what I found work for me is that sometimes I find it would be realistic. So sometimes I would say, I would give them a set of time that I would know is realistic for me. For example, if I was doing, um, say, a resume writing project, I would say, give me one week. And that would be my maximum time. But my personal goal would be to get it done for them in three or four days. And that way, when I would deliver it to my client, it would be a huge surprise for them. And they'll be like, oh my goodness, you've made my day. And that way, I know that at the same time, I'm giving myself leeway in case I'm late, quote unquote late. But at the same time, I've over delivered on my promise. So win-win, and I've always gotten no less than five star reviews for my services as a freelancer. And I've always gotten um, you know, recommendations and referrals and repeat business. Even years later, I've had clients come back to me um, when I initially started my business as a side business years ago in 2019. I've had people come back to me even as much as this year. We're like five years later, they still remember me. They're like, if I need something done, I go to Rachel. They're not going to go to anyone else. They go back to me. They're like, Rachel, are you still doing that business? Because I need your help. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Because they've had such a good relationship and rapport with me because I over-delivered on my promise. So when you're starting out in business, make it a rule of thumb to over-deliver. So going back, number one, create your website. Please build your personal brand. Also, number two, build your personal brand on LinkedIn. Number three, you've got to research what the people need. Number four, you've got to over deliver. And finally, final step, number five, is you've got to scale with paid thought leadership. So if you stay where you are, you will get clients, you'll get people recognizing you to be a thought leader on LinkedIn and on your website, but you want to scale, you want to take it to the next level. You can't settle for that, okay? Otherwise, eventually it will dry up. And in my situation last year, it did dry up. I was pushing really hard on LinkedIn um, and I had my own website and I was writing blogs, but things began to take off a little bit, but then it starts to dry up. It wasn't consistent. It wasn't enough to live on and pay bills, that's for sure. So I had to think outside the box. I had to think about other ways to get on. And the other way that I, I figured was through paid thought leadership. That means 
someone pays me to speak at their event. That means someone pays me to write or to contribute my expertise and my thoughts to their blog, like guest blogging or to their article, to their publication. So I started exploring those opportunities. I initially started writing for the International Business Times, then I stopped writing for them and I realized that there are some questionable ethical practices, let's just leave it there. So I stopped writing for them, but it did give me some good experience, which I was able to take elsewhere. I also wrote for my own blog. I also volunteered, I offered to guest blog at different places. Didn't hear back from those places, but there was one place I did hear back from when I pitched, and that was Forbes, which is the best place I could ever dream of writing for. I pitched to Forbes, I believe it was June, middle of June last year, and by the end of July, I started working for them as a freelance contributor for the leadership and careers column. And that's where I am today. So it's a paid position. It's not, I'm not working for Forbes, but I'm a freelance contrib contributor being paid to write articles for them. And so paid thought leadership really works, especially when it comes to, for example, with myself writing for Forbes, because I'm able to gain way more money than I would have just settling for getting clients here and there ad hoc as they come or even just getting um you know the odd person ask me to speak at their event i'm able to get more consistent money larger sums of money and i can top that up with other things so for example this year um i believe it was in february i spoke at a large pharmaceutical to thousands of employees um at a corporate training event and I delivered the training it was from my home it was remote it took an hour to deliver and i was done and for that, I was paid about $3,000 for that event alone. It, was, it took me an hour to deliver, it took about another hour to prep for the technology bit, um, and it took me probably two or three more hours to, do, to prepare like the actual, I already had the content of the workshop, so just to prepare the actual PowerPoint presentation and things like that. So altogether, for four or five hours work, I got paid $3,000. That's quite a big deal if you ask me. That's what you call paid thought leadership. So those are my five steps. Just to recap, number one, create your own website. Number two, build your LinkedIn presence, please. Number three, research what the people need. This is probably the most important thing you could ever do is research what people need and constantly adapt and be agile to those needs. Number four, you've got to over deliver, okay? And number five, seek out paid thought leadership opportunities and those are the steps you can follow to scale and build, build up your income to a six-figure income and that's the exact steps i really took to get me from being where i was last year being broke having more air in my fridge and my freezer and my pantry than food in fact sometimes i open there'll be no food at all just juice if anything um being way in the red with my credit score all the way down super poor credit score and bills sky high bills Creditors constantly, constantly calling me, ringing down my phone, Rachel, you owe us this, Rachel, you owe us that. To being where I am now, making a six figure income, between January and April this year alone, I made over $60,000. This year I was able to move myself and my family into a beautiful new development, four bedroom house, private renting for the first time. It's an amazing, awesome feeling when you're working for yourself. And I know it can happen for you. I don't care what position you're in right now. You could have been laid off from your job. You can be broke right now. You could be in the red using up your credit cards. I don't care. You can achieve financial freedom and financial success. How do I know this? Because Jesus said, I have come that they might have life, that you might have life and have it more abundantly.